Does body language prove Prince Andrew of England is guilty as a Jeffrey Epstein co-conspirator? Find out next. Welcome back to the channel, Shakers. Derek Van Shake here. Prince Andrew, the second son of Queen Elizabeth, was a friend of Jeffrey Epstein. Epstein had a dark and insatiable sexual appetite for young girls, an obsession he shared with like-minded wealthy and powerful friends. As you probably know, Jeffrey Epstein masterminded an international child sex trafficking ring for himself and his rich, well-connected friends. Which enabled his rich and influential friends to share in his perversion. Those accused of complicity in this scandal include His Royal Highness, Prince Andrew. It's understood Epstein died in prison. Whether it's officially a suicide or a homicide, that's still being investigated. The guards never checked on Epstein once in the eight hours between 10.30 p.m. and 6.30 a.m. when Epstein's body was discovered in his cell with a noose around his neck. Prosecutors say the guards appeared to be asleep for approximately two hours, sat at their desks, browsed the internet for furniture sales, and moved around the common area. His shock death raising suspicions he was a man who knew too much. However, now that Jeffrey Epstein is dead, the focus has been redirected to Epstein's possible co-conspirators, such as Prince Andrew of England, to seek justice. Epstein directed her to also have sex with a number of powerful men, among them Britain's Prince Andrew. He was an abuser. He, he was a participant. Virginia says she was 17 when this photo was taken with the prince in Maxwell's London townhome next to the bathroom, where she says he sexually abused her. With pressure mounting on Prince Andrew, he agreed to do this BBC interview in hopes of exonerating himself publicly and explain how he had no idea what Jeffrey Epstein was doing and claim he did not at all participate in sex with underage girls. So we're going to piece together the evidence along with breaking down Prince Andrew's body language during this shocking interview to reveal the truth. Now... Let's get started. You were perceived by the public as being the party prince. I don't know why I've 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 um, collected that title because I don't I I never have really parted. Lying creates stress and tension throughout the body, so naturally that tension must be released. And when it's released, it's in the form of abnormal behavior for that person. Prince Andrew lied. However, did you catch his nervous tension tick? We'll keep going. Keep watching him closely, and I'll point it out for you. Prince Andrew, he's been called Randy Andy. There was a headline the other week where it was claimed that he had, he'd had sex with a thousand women. And certainly going to Jeffrey's was not about partying. Absolutely not. When Prince Andrew lies, he tends to blink a lot and even close his eyes for an abnormal amount of time. A drastically increased blink rate or closing his eyes for an extended amount of time allows him to subconsciously release the tension of lying that he's feeling throughout his body while also feeling like he's hiding when saying the falsehood. Polygraph lie detector tests work in similar ways, looking for increased tension and stress throughout the body above that person's baseline when certain questions are answered. In addition to the eye Eye blinking and closing, he gives himself a self-comforting hand massage to subconsciously soothe himself for telling the lie. His foot tilts up, indicating increased tension throughout his body for telling that lie. He knows very well that visiting Epstein was not all about business, but was very much about partying. Or when I was staying in his houses in the United States, there was no indication, absolutely no indication. All these people knew what was going on, hairstylists. I mean, the list goes on. I could keep going on and on and on. Drivers, chauffeurs, butlers, housemaids. It took all of these people turning a blind eye which they weren't blind to because we were right there blatantly in front of them. They knew exactly what was going on. Prince Andrew says he was unaware of uh, the sex trafficking, uh, but he spent days in Epstein's New York mansion where the sex trafficking was rampant. You could not spend time there and not know what was going on. And if there was, you have to remember that at the time um, I was 
patron of the NSPCC's full stop campaign. So I knew what, was, what, the, what the things were to look for, but I never saw them. Now Prince Andy is leveraging his prior work with a child cruelty prevention organization in an attempt to support his bogus claim that he had no idea what was going on in Epstein's home. You stayed with him, you were a visitor, a guest on many occasions at his homes, mm. and nothing, nothing struck you as suspicious. No. Nothing. During that whole time. Nothing. Notice as he's shaking his head no and saying no more and more, the nervous stress and tension from lying is surely building up inside of him, which in part is causing his blink rate to increase drastically. You've been on his private plane. Yes. Jeffrey's private plane, dubbed the Lolita Express. You've been to stay on his private island. Yes. Opulence is on display. Perfectly manicured beaches lined with palm trees, surrounded by turquoise waters. One accuser says she took part in an orgy on Epstein's private island in 2002 with approximately eight other young girls who appeared to be under the age of 18. You've stayed at his home in Palm Beach. Yes. They were lured into Epstein's Palm Beach mansion to give him sexually charged massages or sex in exchange for money. You visited Gellin Maxwell's house in Belgravia in London. Yes. At the London home of mutual friend and philanthropist Ghislaine Maxwell, Jeffrey Epstein met Prince Andrew. In 2006, in May, an arrest warrant was issued for Epstein for sexual assault of a minor. Yes. In July, he was invited to Windsor Castle to your daughter, Princess Beatrice's 18th birthday. Why would you do that? Because I was asking Ghislaine. And his longtime associate, Ghislaine Maxwell, a British socialite who allegedly took part in recruiting girls for the billionaire. Epstein accuser Virginia Roberts Jufrey says Maxwell and Epstein ordered her to have sex with a number of powerful men. Ghislaine participated in these acts with him as well. He claims Epstein came to his party because he invited Epstein's girlfriend, who is apparently a friend at university, to come to the party and not Epstein directly. But even if that's true, he surely knew who she would bring. Does he really expect people to believe that this means that he really didn't want Epstein at his daughter's 18th birthday party? So he came to that party knowing police were investigating him. Well, I'm not quite sure whether it was it police that were, I don't know. You see, this is the problem. It was the Palm really Beach police know. at the time. But I mean, I'm afraid, you see, this is the problem. His response is ridiculous. A truly innocent person would not be defending himself like Prince Andy is here. Where's the shock? Where's the horror that he put his own daughters, friends' daughters, and family members in harm's way? He would be sharing in the shock and horror that Epstein and his accomplice recruiter of underage girls, Ghislaine Maxwell, went to his daughter's 18th birthday party where there were surely girls that he either wanted to recruit, did recruit, or even assaulted at that party. Jeffrey Epstein was the master of manipulation, luring poverty-stricken girls in with cash and feeding their dreams of a better life. By the time the sexual abuse began, many were too invested in his promises to get out. Why did you go back? As a kid who had been through what I'd been through in my life already, well, this is what life's about. If he were truly innocent, he would be showing and expressing that horror and sorrow for not knowing about the accusations against Epstein sooner. Digging up dirt on not only the victims, but also the lawyers, the police, everyone involved. Getting investigators to investigate the investigators? Everybody, yep. Did it work? Did he scare people away? Yeah, it definitely worked. Sadly, this is a man that's now dead and they're still afraid to come forward. I was afraid that he was gonna harm my family. In 2008, he was convicted of yep. soliciting and procuring a minor for prostitution. They basically turned victims into prostitutes. Epstein, with an army of lawyers, negotiated a slap on the wrist and a slap in the face for victims, sentenced to a mere 18 months in a Florida jail. I know for a fact that the directive to shut it down came from the highest levels from DC. 
he was jailed. This is where Jeffrey Epstein served his sentence, but really, he only slept here. If Epstein had been your average sex offender, he would have automatically been denied work release. But instead, being Epstein, he was allowed out seven days a week, 12 hours a day. Driven by chauffeur to his downtown office, where it's said he was attended to by two young victims he flew in from New York. So for Jeffrey Epstein, this prison sentence was pretty much business as usual. This yeah. was your friend. How yeah. did you feel about it? That's a really good question. How Prince Andrew feels when his friend, who went to his daughter's 18th birthday party, was now a convicted sex offender. His response will say a lot. Let's watch. Well, I ceased contact with him after uh, I was aware that he was um, under investigation. And that was later on in, in 2006. Yes, he defends, defends, defends. She gave him the opportunity to tell us how shocked he was finding out his friend was a convicted sex offender. But he just defends himself the whole time. And I wasn't in touch with him again until 2010. Maybe even reminisce an emotional conversation they've had with a loved one about how the person they've trusted was convicted of such a horrible crime. But there was none of that from him. He was just purely defending. December of 2010, you went to stay with him at his New York mansion. Soon after he was released and had returned to New York, he was snapped, strolling through Central Park with Prince Andrew. Why? Why were you staying with a convicted sex offender? Right. The UK public demanded to know why a royal remained close with a convicted pedophile. Now, I went there with the sole purpose of saying to him that because he had been convicted, it was inappropriate for us to be seen together. That was the sole purpose, he said. The fact that he proactively included sole purpose raises suspicions that he could be covering up for the real reason he went to see Epstein. Prince Andy supposedly hasn't spoken to Epstein in four years, and he goes to visit him to break off a friendship? Does that make sense to you? Right, we don't randomly visit people from great distances to break off friendships with people we haven't spoken to in over four years. Because this was um, serious um, and uh, I felt that doing it over the telephone was the chicken's way of doing it. I had to go and see him and talk to him and we had an opportunity to go for a walk in the park. Because of what has happened, I don't think it is appropriate that we should remain in contact. There seems to be two possibilities here. One, Prince Andy was much closer to Epstein than he's claiming. And two, the main reason he wanted to see Epstein was for some other reason and not to break off our friendship. And what other reason could that be? Let's keep watching. But with all the attendant scrutiny on me, then I don't think it is a wise thing to do. Prince Andy is saying that because other people would look down on him for being friends with Epstein, he shouldn't be friends with Epstein. Much different than saying, I broke off our friendship because I didn't want to be friends with a convicted pedophile. How many victims are out there? I would say it's in the thousands. Jeffrey needs to have sex at least seven times a day. Demanding at least three different girls a day to massage him. In a perverted pyramid scheme, Epstein would pay extra for his victims to find more girls for him, the younger, the better. What Epstein was convicted of wasn't personally a big deal to Prince Andy. Maybe because it wasn't all that shocking to Prince Andrew, and maybe he even participated. Let's keep going. I had to show leadership, and I had to go and see him, and I had to tell him that's it. This video allegedly shows Prince Andrew at Epstein's Manhattan mansion, waving goodbye to a young woman as he peers out the door. The footage was reportedly shot in 2010, less than an hour after Epstein left the house with another young woman. The prince even appears to check that no one was looking. That was December of 2010. Yep. He threw a party to yep. celebrate his release, and you were invited as no, the guest of honor. Oh, in 2010, that there wasn't certainly wasn't a, a, a party to celebrate his release in December, because it was a small dinner party. There were only eight or 10 of us, I think, at the, at the, at the dinner. If there, was a, if there was a party, then I'd know nothing about that. 
you were invited to that dinner as a guest of honor. Does that sound like a friendship breakup to you? He attended Epstein's party. Surely Prince Andy wasn't very upset with Epstein for being a convicted pedophile. Now in this next part, listen to how Andrew slips, tries to cover it up, and then quickly move past it so he doesn't get caught. Well, I was there, so there was a dinner. I don't think it was quite... As, as you might put it, but yeah, okay, I was there for, <laughs> I was there for dinner, yeah. She previously called it a party, and then he says, it wasn't quite as you might put it. I don't think it was quite as, as you might put it. Indicating that he's admitting there was something that could be considered a party that night, but quickly realizes what he just did and makes that odd stutter blinking twisted face to try and move past his slip up and just call it a dinner. I'm just trying to work this out because you said you went to break up the relationship and yet you stayed at that New York mansion several days. I'm wondering how yeah, long- But I was doing a number of other things while I was there. But you were staying at the house of yes. a convicted sex offender. It was a convenient place to stay. Judgment was probably colored by my um, tendency to be too honorable. There was video footage of Epstein accompanied by young girls, and you were there staying in his house. I never, I mean, if they were, then um, I wasn't a party to any of that. I never saw them. A liar has a tall order. They have to weave their fabrication into the known evidence and the unknown future evidence, all the while coming across as truthful. So they'll use less affirmatives and more wishy-washy language to give themselves more flexibility when future unknown evidence comes out. Another guest was John Brockman, uh, the literary agent. Now, Notice how wide Prince Andy's eyes got. Big wide eyes like that indicate intense fear and surprise. Do you think an innocent person would be so fearful and surprised of merely hearing a name being brought up before he found out anything that person said about him? He described really? seeing you there getting a foot massage from a young Russian woman. Did that happen? No. A massive deception here. Eyes get glassy in fear that he's getting caught, but there's no sign of confusion or anger that he's being wrongfully accused, like we would expect of an innocent person. You're absolutely sure or yeah, you can't remember? I'm absolutely sure. When he's asked if he's absolutely sure, he starts with a congruent head nod, but then quickly transitions it to an incongruent head shake, which is in disagreement with his words, which indicates possible deception. He should be saying, I'm absolutely sure, not I'm absolutely sure. Yeah, you can't remember. I'm absolutely sure. The incongruent head nod, head shake is not always a sign of deception, but should be used along with body language clusters or when someone's words are so strong and definitive that it's extremely odd that they're not being congruent, as we're seeing right here. So John Brockman's statement is false. Now, if you are him, but were telling the truth and found out that some guy is spreading lies about you, smearing your good name, what would you say about that person? Now, listen to what Prince Andy says. Well, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I don't know Mr. Brockman, so I don't know what he's talking about. Instead of affirmatively and directly saying, yes, he's lying, Prince Andy says he doesn't know the guy and doesn't know what he's talking about. Ever hear a liar say that? I don't know what you're talking about. Or, what do you mean? But that definitely wasn't you getting a foot massage from a Russian girl in Jeffrey Epstein's house. No. Oh my gosh, this guy is too easy. Have you ever seen a liar look side to side in an attempt to imply confusion while pulling their eyebrows excessively close together and slowly denying the claim to overcompensate for the mimicking of sincerity? Girl in Jeffrey Epstein's house. He clearly hasn't improved his lying ability since he was 10 years old. It might seem a funny way to break off a friendship, a four day, house party of sorts with a dinner. Did you worry that he had something that could compromise you? No, no. Eric Margolis has been behind these doors. He was invited to one of Epstein's events in the early 90s. I'll tell you what was the oddest thing for me was soon after uh, we had arrived, uh, one of his uh, people came up to me and said, would you like a massage? And uh, I was uh, extremely taken aback by this. Uh, this is a highly unusual. The word honey trap came into my mind. Authorities reportedly discovered video cameras and microphones 
inside Epstein's properties. He used me as a form of blackmail, so these people would owe him favors. He wanted to always have something on someone just in case he needed it. Now that seems to be the real reason why he decided to visit Epstein in New York. Prince Andy may have wanted to suck up to Epstein to make sure he doesn't expose him while also doing who knows what in Epstein's mansion. Do you regret the whole friendship with Epstein? Now, I still not. And the reason being is that, that the, the people that I met um, and the opportunities that I was given to learn, um, either by him or because of him, were actually very useful. If the prince were innocent, he wouldn't be defending knowing Epstein. Prince Andy's connection to Epstein should be one of the greatest embarrassments of his entire life. Epstein is one of the biggest scums that has ever walked this earth. This is wherever Epstein was touching down. He needed to have girls on constant call. For every place that he goes to, he's already got people lined up and makers making that happen. You have no doubt he was having sex with a 12 year old. I was told by him that he was having sex with three 12 year olds. And he's explaining how he learned and met people through Epstein? There's no amount of learning or connections that can ever make that relationship a positive one. Unless maybe he's like-minded with Epstein. They're just two of a like mind, you know? They both love having sex with young women. They both think that they can get away with everything, that they're above society. We're not, we're, we, weren't, we weren't that close, so therefore, I mean, yes, I would go and stay in his house, but that was because of his girlfriend, not because of him. Another total bogus claim. He initially said he saw Epstein to break off the friendship, but now he's claiming the reason he stayed at the house was to see Epstein's girlfriend, who lives at Epstein's house. And yeah, Jeffrey Epstein just happened to be there. Yeah, totally bogus. And not to mention that Epstein's girlfriend is a widely accused sex offender and is now wanted by the FBI. Glenn Maxwell considered the most prominent and cruel. I don't mean to sound sexist in any way, shape or form, but I, I expected it from a man, but I didn't expect it from a woman. December of 2010, the only time you saw him after he was convicted, yes. did you yeah. see him or speak no. to him again? No, no that was that Never, enough, 2010 then. was it. Blinking intensely and also closing his eyes at times while cutting her off to prevent hearing the question that would ignite even further stress in him and then telling us that it's funny, which is even more convincing and not just conveying. He seems to be lying. There did appear to be other communications after he happened to be photographed with Epstein in 2010. I was a baby stuck in a world where grown-ups were allowed to do whatever they wanted, and I was lost. And were you trafficked that night? Yeah. I was trafficked to other billionaires. I was trafficked to politicians, professors, even royalty. It was the elite of the world. It was the people who run the world. It was the most powerful people in the world. How many times were you trafficked to him? Three times. One of Epstein's accusers, Virginia Roberts, yeah. has made allegations against you. Keelan woke me up in the morning and said, you're going to meet a prince today. I didn't know at that point that I was going to be trafficked to that prince. Then we went to Club Tramp and he danced with me and, and he sweats a lot and he smells funny. Keelan tells me in the car that I have to do what I do for Jeffrey for Prince Andrew. Your response? I have no recollection of ever meeting this lady. None whatsoever. Increased blink rate, which indicates the increased stress of what he just said. And given the circumstances, it seems to be the stress of lying. Do you remember her? No. I, I, I have no recollection of ever meeting her. Um, uh, His blink rate is going through the roof. This topic is causing him a lot of stress, surely because he knows that one misstep with his version and he's sunk because these are criminal allegations against him personally. Much different than the questions earlier, which were mostly about why he's friends with a pedophile. I'm almost, in fact, I'm convinced um, that I was never in trance with her. There are a number of things that are wrong with that story. One of which is that, is that I don't know where the bar is in, in um, tramps. Now Prince Andy goes on his bogus alibi spree. However, what he doesn't seem to understand is that if your alibis are bogus, you wind up discrediting yourself. I don't drink. I don't drink. Do you remember dancing at tramp? No. That couldn't have happened because the date that is being suggested I was at home with the children. 
uh, I was with the children. I'd taken Beatrice to uh, a Pizza Express in Woking. Why would you remember a, a Pizza Express birthday and being at home? Because he already started with a little bit of a smile, but watch what he does when he further explains his bogus claim. Going to Pizza Express in Woking is an unusual thing for me to do. Yes, smiles widely with total all-out duping delight. He can't even hold it together because he knows it's so bogus that this is his alibi. Now watch this next part and see if you can pick out any of his deceptive body language. A very unusual thing for me to do. I've never been, I've only been through working a couple of times um, and I remember it weirdly distinctly. But as soon as somebody reminded me of it, I went, oh yes, I remember that. Did you pick up any of it? The cluster of massively increased blink rate combined with his incongruent head shake indicates deception. Then did you notice how he said, oh yes, I remember that. He changed his tonality and his mannerisms. But, uh, but as soon as somebody reminded me of it, I went, oh yes, I remember that. In a subconscious way to mask that he's the one who's saying the lie to feel less connected to the wrong of lying. Also at the end of it, he closes his eyes for an extended amount of time, which confirms his deception. She described dancing with you no. and you profusely sweating. <laughs> There's a slight problem with, 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 with the sweating um, because uh, I, I have a peculiar medical condition, which is that I don't sweat um, or I didn't sweat at the time, H had suffered what I would describe as an overdose of adrenaline in the Falklands War when I was shot at. It's completely bogus that Prince Andy couldn't sweat because of an overdose of adrenaline from what seems to be described as PTSD. But here's the problem. As you can imagine, PTSD causes more sweating because of reliving a traumatic event. It wouldn't cause less sweating. Does he really think people are buying that stupid claim? And it's only because I have done a number of things in the recent past that I'm starting to be able to do that again. So he's done a number of things that he doesn't tell us, which has now allowed him to sweat again? More closed eyes, massive spikes in his blink rate. In the recent past that I'm starting to be able to do that again. He definitely seems to be deceptive, but when I hit play, his deception is confirmed watch. So I'm afraid to say that, 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 that there's a medical condition that says that I didn't do it, so therefore... He's afraid to say? We say that when there's bad news. How is what he's touting to be a full exoneration? How is that bad news? Clearly he doesn't truly believe anything he's saying is a true exoneration. He just seems to be hoping that the public isn't as smart as he fears. And then he talks about his bogus made-up medical condition as if it's a doctor's note to be excused from PE class. That, that, that there's a medical condition that says that I didn't do it, so therefore... My bogus medical condition that I made up on the spot says that it's impossible that I did it. So stop accusing me of doing it. What planet is this guy living on? He must really think we're stupid. No, Andrew, you're stupid for thinking that. Do you remember meeting her at all? No. Prince Andrew, of course, denies that this ever happened. He denies that it ever happened, but he knows the truth, and I know the truth. She provided a photo of yes. the two of you together. Yes. We naturally don't want to lie because we know it's wrong. There's consequences and it's a lot of work to lie. So we'll sometimes observe the liar taking breaks from lying whenever possible, such as here. Your arm was around her waist. Yes. If he were innocent, he would not be agreeing to the things she's listing off. It would feel so wrong, so unfair, and so self-destructive to say yes to something that someone else is lying about. But he's just going along with it, not correcting her, or setting the record straight at all. You've seen the photo. I've seen the photograph. How do you explain that? I can't. Because I don't, I have no, I, again, I have absolutely no memory of that photograph ever being taken. Massive amounts of blinking, closing his eyes, nervous stuttering, pulling his neck down in self-defense after saying it, and also an asymmetric shoulder shrug, which indicates a lack of confidence in what he just said. He seems to remember that photo being taken. You can't prove whether or not that photograph is uh, faked or not because it is a photograph of a photograph of a photograph. Prince Andrew denies the allegations against him and he says that this photo is a fake that he was never there and that he's not his arm and they're not his fingers those are his fingers that is andrew this photo has been verified as an original and it's been since given to the fbi and they've never contested that it's a fake this is a real photo and that was the first time you met him and that's the very first time i met him 
And that's right before I was abused by him. Now listen to what he says in this next part and see if you recognize anything that seems odd. I don't remember going upstairs uh, in the house because that photograph is taken upstairs. And I don't think I ever went upstairs um, uh, in Ghislaine's house. Right. How did Andrew know the photo was taken upstairs when he claims he doesn't remember ever going upstairs in her house? Oh, it's definitely me. I mean, that's, a, that's a picture of me. It's not a picture of, I don't believe it's a picture of me in London because when I go out, to, when I go out in London, I wear a suit and a tie. So you think that photo has been faked? Nobody can prove uh, whether or not it, um, that, it, that photograph has been doctored. Now Andrew talks about how it's difficult to prove it's real, as if he's trying to create doubt in the mind of a jury. But this is not beyond a reasonable doubt in a court of law. He's talking to the general public. Andrew has no reasonable explanation for how that's not him in that photo with Virginia. When I take very, very few photographs, public displays of affection are not something that, that I do. I take very, very few photographs. Do you recall any kind of sexual contact with Virginia Roberts no. then None. or any other time? None whatsoever. You're not even acknowledged as being alive or there or important or or cared for or worried about in any way. None of those human emotions were attached to to me when I was trafficked to Prince Andrew. There wasn't one time that I was trafficked to any individual that I thought, oh, He's an okay guy. No, I'm, I was always disgusted that there were so many people involved. She had sex with you three times. She is not confused about this. She said the first was in London when she was trafficked to you. The second was at Epstein's mansion in New York. There's a lot of scars hidden behind those walls. It should be ripped down. It should be burned to the ground. Some of my worst memories are from this place. Epstein ordered her to have sex with some of his powerful friends, including on three occasions, Prince Andrew, twice when she was just 17. On the day that she says that this, that this occurred, she, they'd already left in, uh, to go to the island before I got back from Boston. So it, it, I don't think that could have happened at all. Now he doesn't think it could have happened at all. If he were as innocent as he's claiming, he would be much more direct and not wishy-washy around such a serious accusation. After the encounter in London, she says she had sex with him again at Epstein's New York mansion, where she was seen in his company by this witness, Joanna Schoberg. Another victim. There was a witness there, Johanna Stolberg. Recruited by Ghislaine Maxwell under the guise of a legitimate assistant position, but asked her to perform sexual massages. Who says that you did visit the house in that month. I wasn't staying there. I may have visited, but, I, but, but no. Definitely didn't, definitely, definitely no, no, no activity. Stuttering, massive amounts of blinking, closing of eyes. What he's saying seems to make him feel very nervous and stressed. Given the circumstances, all the indicators of feelings which translate into deception are observed. Are you saying you don't believe her? She's lying. If you felt someone out there was spreading terrible and disgusting false accusations about you, would you be okay calling that person a liar? Now listen to what Prince Andy says. That's a very difficult thing to um, answer because I'm not in a position to know um, uh, what, what she's trying to um, uh, achieve. Not in a position to know what she's trying to achieve? What she's trying to achieve is not the issue. The issue is that according to Prince Andy, she's supposedly saying terrible false things about him. And he can't call her a liar for doing that? It's because he seems to know she's not lying and he's subconsciously avoiding calling her a liar because he knows who's the real liar. If you haven't kept up with all of Prince Andrew's bogus excuses and lies for why he's not guilty of what Virginia has accused him, watch this. I don't know where the bar is at Tramps. I don't think I've ever bought a drink in Tramps. I don't drink. I was at home with the children. I'd taken Beatrice to Pizza Express. Pizza Express in Woking is an unusual thing for me to do. 
I was at home with the children. I didn't sweat at the time. Almost impossible for me to sweat. There's a medical condition that says that I didn't do it, so therefore I don't think I ever went upstairs because that photograph is taken upstairs. I wear a suit and a tie. Those are my travelling clothes. I've never seen Epstein with a camera. I take very, very few photographs. Public displays of affection are not something that I do. What is your message to her? I don't have a message for her because I have to have a thick skin. If somebody's going to make those sorts of, of allegations, then I've just got to have a thick skin and get on with it. But they never happened. Obviously lying. You know the body language on him, especially at this point in this video. But what's interesting is no mentioning to tell her to stop spreading lies about him or anything. It's not like he just decided to play the ignore the accusations card because he's doing this whole interview based on those serious accusations. And he has nothing to say to those who he's claiming are spreading terrible lies about him. Again, it's because he knows who's lying here. Would you be willing to testify or give a statement under oath if you were asked. And I would have to take um, all the legal advice um, that there was before I was to, to do that sort of, of thing. But uh, if push came to shove and the legal, <coughs> the legal advice was to do so, then I would be duty bound to do so. Prince Andy put out so many caveats, it's nearly impossible for him to ever testify under oath. I wonder why he doesn't want to testify under oath. They've asked for a legal statement from you. There is an active FBI investigation now. W would you be willing to provide that? Again, I, I'm, I'm bound by what um, my legal advice is. Um, um, uh, legal advisors tell me. The typical pushing the blame to his attorneys for why he won't testify. But why wouldn't he testify under oath if he had nothing to hide and was innocent? He would be able to set the record straight and correct his legacy if he were truly innocent. But the accused are typically only advised to voluntarily testify under oath if they're actually truthful. Do I regret the fact that, that, that he has quite obviously conducted himself in a manner unbecoming. In a manner unbecoming. Yes. Unbecoming. He was a sex offender. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm being polite. The scary part in all of this is that we don't know how many more children Prince Andy was involved with, specifically from Epstein's international child sex trafficking ring. Virginia may not have been the first and may not have been the last because it's very possible that other survivors just haven't come forward yet. I think the nature of this kind of abuse means that you're conditioned to be silent, to be isolated, secretive, and shameful. You know, it was a big, a big game for him, and we were the pieces of his game. And you're like, I'm just not going to say anything, because that's what he told me to do. Give this video a thumbs up if you think Prince Andrew is guilty. Give this video a thumbs down if you think Prince Andrew is not guilty. Now in the comments, what should happen to Prince Andrew? Should a prince go to prison? Should he do hard labor? Let everyone know in the comments below. He just may be a prince in exile in his own country. Remember to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on new body language and investigative videos where we always seem to shake up YouTube. And I'll see you at the top.